Hello, welcome to the daily drawing. Today we're going to be drawing a kangaroo rat. They're super cute looking. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the body. So the body is going to be a very, very round shape. So we're going to start with kind of an ovaly shape like this. And then if you'll notice the head overlaps the body quite a lot right here. So the neck is kind of um, a little bit hidden by the head itself. So when we go to draw the head though, we're going to draw it kind of like an egg shape to where it's a little bit pointier on one side, a little bit more rounded on the other. If you struggle drawing that shape, feel free to draw a parenthesis first and then draw kind of a curvy greater than a less than sign. So it would look kind of like this if you struggle drawing that particular shape. So it's almost a triangle shape if that helps. All right, also pay attention to the size of it. You don't want this to be bigger than the body, but you also don't want it to be like super tiny. Otherwise it won't really fit the aesthetic of the uh, size of the rat. All right, so once you get that part done, then if you want to, you can erase the body on the inside of the head. And then what I would suggest doing, so we don't have such a sharp angle right here, is I would connect the head to the body with kind of like a smile like this, and then just kind of make sure that it rounds out on the edges of the body itself so that you have it all connected together and it doesn't look like a sharp indent. We want to keep that relatively smooth. Same thing with the uh, neck area right here. So I'm just going to round that down. This time I'm gonna do a frown, connecting it to the bottom of the body and to the front of the head. All right, so now that I got the shape of the head, I want to go ahead and do the ears first. If I notice this ear right here is on the edge where the body meets the neck and it's going to go up in a little bit of a frown shape. So they're pretty small. So I'm just gonna start right here above the neck area. I'm gonna do a frown line and connect it back up to the head. You don't have to make these too big. Um, I know the older they get, the slightly bigger their ears get for some cases. This one's kind of like a younger baby one, so that's why they're a little bit smaller. All right, now if I go directly down here, we can see directly down from it is where the other ear is gonna be located. And it's also located a little bit further down from the center of the head. If this right here is the center of the head, notice that the ear is located directly below it. So if I find the center of the head, which would be about here, then I can, then I can draw the ear down below it. So if I go frowny face, like this, then that can help me get my ear shape. And you can draw a little bigger, a little smaller, however big that you want it. So I just drew a little extra line to make it look a little bit bigger. And then we do see the inside of the ear has a bunch of random shapes and stuff. So an easy way to get through with that is I just draw like another little circly shape. So it almost looks kind of like a frog at this point, and those would be like the eyes. All right, you can also add a little bit of shading on the inside of the ear to help make it feel a little bit more 3D. Now, um, uh, very important though, measure the size of your ear and make sure that both ears are about the same. The one that's actually closest to you should be a little bit bigger than the one in the back because it's closer to you. So uh, make sure that you're measuring that as you're going. So here I'm having to readjust the size of my ear because I had drawn it too small. So check that as you're going just to make sure that you're satisfied with what you have. All right, so now that I have my two ears, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do my nose. The nose is gonna be at the tip of the uh, muzzle, which would be right here. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw like a little circly shape at the tip of the nose. I'm just gonna fill it in because it is a little bit of a darker color right there for the nose. We can see that the muzzle area right here actually has a curve, it dips in a little bit and then it comes out for the cheeks. So we do need to alter the shape of the front of the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a uh, smile right here for the muzzle. So I'm gonna start at the nose, I'm gonna smile it like this. So we get like a little small smile and then we're gonna make that smile be an indention. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push that line up. What I would suggest doing is after you do the first initial smile, erase underneath the smile like this so that we see that curve. And then at the corner of that smile, just gonna add a little bit of a parenthesis or a little bit of a smile going down from it so that we get that angle of the cheek. Now, uh, you don't wanna make that like super, super pointy. You wanna just make it kind of a gradual shift. So kind of edit and tweak it until you're satisfied with the angle change. This part should be the muzzle and this part right here would be the cheekbone right there. All right, now that we have the muzzle and the nose and all that stuff done, now we can go ahead and figure out our eye location. Notice that if this right here is where the cheek met the muzzle, straight up from that is where we start the eye and then it almost touches the ear. So they have relatively large eyes. They're very round. It's a little bit flatter at the top than it is at the bottom. The bottom is very, very round. That might be partly due to the angle. So it's kind of up to you what shape you wanna do for the eye. So I'm gonna go up from the part where we just drew the intersection or where it um, has that indention. And this is where I'm gonna start my eye. I'm gonna start my eye with kind of like a big frown like this. 
That way I have that nice curve at the top and then I'm gonna do a big smile at the bottom to have that curve at the bottom. And as always, I like to leave a little highlight and then fill in the rest. It's kind of up to you how you wanna go about that. And then you can erase any guidelines that you might have. All right, so now because this is kind of a top view picture, I don't see the actual mouth itself. I just see the top of the muzzle so I don't have to worry about drawing the rest of its mouth. I do see some whiskers, so if you want to add some whiskers to it, feel free to, or you can always come back and add those last as just a final detail. All right, so now that I'm done with the head area, I can go ahead and move on to the rest. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do the back leg first and then come back to the front leg. The reason I'm doing it is that the back leg is actually kind of in front and then these front legs are actually tucked underneath the body. So I think it's more beneficial to do that first. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the curvature of the body, which I wanna make mine curve up just a little bit more so I'm gonna add a little bit more of a curve to the top of the body because I noticed that mine is a little bit flat. Yours might be totally fine, so you might not have to change it at all. It's kind of up to how you drew it initially. So I noticed that the back of the body is going to turn into the thigh right here, and it's really, really uh, big. Part of the way that these uh, animals get their name, the kangaroo rat, is because uh, they have really, really big back legs and they uh, hop around kind of similar to how kangaroos do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend the thigh, curve it inwards until it gets into the body. I don't want to fully connect. That way I have a gap that the uh, back spine can kind of go into the leg area. So I'm going to leave a gap here, but I'm going to curve this down. You can actually curve this a little outside of the body just to give it a little bit more mass if you would like. And then you can erase anything that's on the inside. So here I have the actual uh, thigh itself. Now, if you look really closely, you can see where the thigh, this is the knee right here. So it turns into the leg right in this area. We have the ankle and it goes out forward for the foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw kind of like a greater or less than sign, starting at the very bottom of the thigh right here, where it kind of comes out of the belly area. I'm just going to go back in a very sharp greater or less than sign like this. Once I have that initially uh, drawn, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow it back with kind of like a parallel line, like I'm drawing two greater than less than signs. Very important, make sure that it stays kind of thick. You don't want it to look like a pencil. They are very thin, but they're not like a single line thin. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is for the foot area, I'm actually just gonna cap it off with a smile or a parenthesis, like this at first, just to help me make sure that I'm gonna have my toes all the correct size. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to draw like a little, uh, parenthesis or a little frown in order to separate out my toes. Now, if you're going for realism and you want to draw them in a little bit more detail, feel free to. I'm just going to keep mine kind of simple for today, just so that I can get a little bit more of a cartoony aesthetic. All right. Now, uh, some things that you can do is uh, the legs are kind of more uh, skin and then they have fur on top of it. So where you see the leg turning into the foot, essentially, what I would suggest doing is add fur texture there just to give a little bit more uh, understanding of what's going on in that particular part of that animal. All right, then from here, I can go ahead and do my lower legs. So here we can see this is just a tiny part of the shoulder sticking out. And then we have the arms are going underneath the neck area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw just like a small parenthesis like this on the front edge of the uh, arm area. And then I'm just going to tuck this underneath in a frown. Very, very small. Keep it close to the body. Don't go too far down. Otherwise, your arm will be like on the ground. All right. And then I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a parenthesis at the front and connect that back to the body itself. Now, if this ends up looking way too big, if it's bigger than the foot, you've gone too big. These should be very small. So be careful not to make that front fit, uh, foot too big. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a little parenthesis. Now, um, you might see two toes. You might see three toes. You might only see one toe, kind of depending on the angle. I only see like one crease. I don't really see that other crease because it's a little bit tucked up behind. But if you wanted to add an extra... Um, crease there. They do have uh, four, I think, uh, three toes on the front, I think. Don't quote me on that. You might want to research that one on your own, but according to this picture, it's got a three. All right, so then what I was just doing is erase the um, area where the body kind of overlaps with the leg and then add a little bit of a fur texture there just so that we know that the uh, like neck is on top of the leg and the leg's not on top of the neck. So we want to make sure that we know that this is tucked up underneath it. All right, so if you wanted to add some more fur, you can't add some fur onto the belly area. And then I don't see the other legs because the other leg would be like down here and then the other arm would be kind of somewhere over here. So we actually don't see the other parts of its body. But one thing I do see is their really long tail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna curve mine in because I think that would look pretty aesthetic. You can keep yours going out smooth and flat like this. Notice their tails, um, you can fit almost two body lengths in their tails. So make sure that you make their tails really, really long. 
So the tail comes out of the base of the spine and then it goes out fairly straight and then it gets a little bit bigger and poofier at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the spine, which is gonna be about halfway down the, um, uh, the thigh. And then I'm just going to draw a line going out. Just for mine, I'm gonna add a little bit of a curve to make it more interesting until I get however long I want the tail. And then at the end of the tail, I want to add some fluff. So I'm just gonna add that Z line. The Z line is basically just doing that V or W over and over and adding a little bit of a curve to it. So you wanna have a goal of getting a spike and then making that spike get wider. All right, so now that I've got a little bit of a Z line going on, once I think that I have a fluffy enough tail, then I'm just going to go very thin and smooth and follow it back with a parallel line. So it stays relatively like a regular rat tail until it gets to that end and that's where it gets really, really floofy, <laughs> which is cute. All right, so uh, we are pretty much almost already done. So it, um, erase any guidelines that you don't want. I would suggest leave uh, the crease that makes up the back of the head because that helps separate the head from the body. But if you personally don't like it, you can erase it. And it still communicates pretty fine as um, a separation there. But I'm going to leave mine. I'm going to add a little bit of a texture to it though. All right, so if you want to leave it like this, you can. If you want to add a little bit more texture or even like the fur pattern and stuff, um, uh, you definitely can do that. I'm going to add a little bit of that fur pattern. They have kind of like a slightly darker area going down the center of their spine. And then they got lots of different kind of like oranges and like whites and almost kind of like uh, yellows and stuff in different parts of their body, which I think looks pretty cool. It's a uh, very distinctive color patterns, which of course this is art and you can add any kind of color pattern or texture that you want to to it. Um, I do like their tails. They have like super white fluffy tips to their tail. But then they got like almost like stripes or spots going on, which I think looks really cool. Very aesthetically pleasing. All right. So I think, um, ooh, they have like a little mask that's so cute. All right. So I think I'm uh, almost done. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, shading to this just to add a little bit more emphasis to certain areas, especially with those overlaps. So I'm going to overlap this arm with a little bit more shadow, maybe a little bit more on the belly, just to give it a little bit more three dimensionality. I'm also going to add a little bit of a shadow to the ground to help make it feel as though we're looking at the uh, kind of top-ish of this animal. So it feels more like it's actually sitting on the ground. All right, so uh, once you are satisfied with your shading, if, the, if you ever go any uh, areas that are too dark, feel free to erase it or lighten it up. Your eraser is just as important of a tool as your pencil is, by the way. I think I've mentioned that before, but in case you forgot, it is still very important to know. All right, so whenever you are satisfied with your drawing, you can call it done. All right, so there is a kangaroo rat. I hope you guys had fun drawing him. He's really cute and tiny and of course you can uh, change it to being just a normal rat if you wanted to just by changing up a couple things. But yeah, all right. I hope you guys had fun. Have a good day. Bye.